All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 1992 Chevy S10. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline four. Down below is a five speed manual transmission. Guys, I am super excited to be driving this here S10 for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I haven't driven one in a while and there's a couple things I absolutely love about these S10s and I'll share that with you in a little bit. But the second reason is the iron Duke, the 2.5 liter given to the S10 was named the Iron Duke. And in my opinion, that is the best name ever given to an engine ever. The Iron Duke. I feel like it's a Super Smash Brothers character that, you know, like someone's like, oh, you're, oh, you're doing the Iron Duke. Oh, he's going to win. Like it, it's, it sounds like an overpowered character in a video game. Like, oh, he's got the Iron Duke. Of course he won. Oh, he was Iron Duke. It's so cool. It's it's the best name for an engine ever. And so the Iron Duke is a 2.5 liter engine. Came in a lot of Chevy products. The Fiero actually got this engine as well. And it makes about 105 horsepower, 135 foot pounds of torque, which is not a whole lot, but this is a tiny little truck. This thing isn't big, so it doesn't really need big power. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Iron Duke. Come on, Iron Duke. Yeah, it's not fast. However, it doesn't need to be. It's a small little pickup truck. Like I said, paired to a five-speed manual transmission. I like it. The clutch is pretty light. The throw obviously is long. It's a pickup truck. And the clutch travel is really long. It engages about halfway up the pedal. So pretty normal there, but the actual pedal travel is very, very long. Last but not least, this S10 is rear wheel drive. However, of course, you could get it in four wheel drive if that's what you wanted. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of different gauges and I absolutely love the S10 gauges. That's why I love this truck so much. The first time I reviewed one back in the day. I reviewed a 1988, also owned by Colin, who owns this current truck. But I love how the gauges look like they should be digital. They're definitely, definitely not. But they sort of have this digital sort of feel to them. Whenever I look at them, I think of the old game from the 70s, Electronic Football. I'll see if I can find any images or video of Electronic Football. It was a video game from the 70s, but as we know, video games now, it's not not quite what you would think. Interestingly enough, on the gauge cluster, I do get a little shift up light. It'll warn you to shift up to keep shifting for optimal fuel economy, although you don't really have to pay attention to it. It doesn't force you into gear, which modern Chevys do. Modern stick shift Chevys will actually force you from first into fourth. This doesn't do that. It just gives you a little light, and then when you don't do it, it just turns the light off. It's like, ah, we tried, you know? To the right of the gauges, I have my cooling options, heat and AC, very, very nice. And then on the left, I have my parking lights, dimmer switch, things like that. I love 80s cars, how they sort of pop out at you, these sort of buttons. My RX-7 is the same way. You know, I've driven a handful of 80s cars with this same sort of thing. Really, really like that. I do have an added tachometer up above the gauges since the S10 does not get a tachometer from the factory. On the door, I just have my manual locks and manual windows, nothing too crazy. And then coming into the center, I have two climate control vents and the stock radio that actually has a Biggie Smalls cassette tape in it. I love the look of the stock radio, very late 80s, early 90s. I mean, this reminds me of, you know, the old Cadillac Eldorado my grandparents used to have. Very, very cool. So I actually learned that the radio in this particular S10 is in fact out of a Cadillac. I actually learned that after filming. So it actually has some equalizers, but the stock Chevy S10 radio is the exact same, just without the equalizers in the upper left-hand corner. And of course, a 12-volt outlet to the left of that which in the 90s was more commonly used as a cigarette lighter. Then I have this giant swooping shelf underneath everything. It goes under the glove box, which the glove box says S10. I really, really like that. But I have this big, long shelf holding another cassette tape. I really, really like that. You know, these trucks were used as tools, as utility vehicles. And so you can put your tools down here. You can put, well, now you can put your phone down there. But back in the day, you'd stick your your screwdriver, your Marlboro Reds, and your Pearl Jam cassette tape. 
all would fit on that nice shelf. Then I have the floor mounted shifter, like I said, super long throw because it is a truck mounted real down low. One thing I do wanna say about the interior is that normally I always rag on GM products, Chevys, Buicks, Pontiacs, for having cheap feeling interiors. And while this interior doesn't feel super premium, the dial to raise and lower your fan speed feels solid. The radio dials feel solid. This is before GM gave up and switched to plastic everything. It all works even now, 30 years later, it all still works and it feels good. It feels solid. I don't feel like if I sneeze wrong, I'm going to break one of these switches off. I love that. I absolutely love that. The seats are nice and comfortable. It is a bench seat up front here. GM really knew comfort back in the 80s and 90s, and that definitely shows here. This isn't anything special of a truck, but it still is very, very comfortable. Unfortunately, I don't have back seats, so we'll talk about the exterior. Well, I love the look of it. You know, I love the square body front end. I love the bed. This is a single cab. I mean, it, it just looks great. It definitely looks the part. Definitely looks dated. You know, vehicles these days aren't nearly as square, and that's pretty obvious by now. One thing about the exterior, now that I'm thinking about it, is both S10s from this era that I've driven have had door closing issues. They have alignment issues. You really got to slam the door in order to get them to close. So if you buy an S10 from this era, you're like, man, my door won't close. Don't worry, none of them do. Ooh, downshift. Let's see if we can do second. Oh yeah, we can. And so my final thoughts on the S10 are as such. I love this body style of the S10. I've driven this as well as the newer body style from 94 till 2004 and the difference is this this body style the 92 is a lot more harsh it's a lot more square it's not rounded around the edges it has unapologetic suspension it's stiff the engine is not amazingly quick but it works you feel everything in this this feels very 80s where the newer S10 feels very 90s, rounded, a lot smoother. And I think the best metaphor I can draw for this is my shoes. Now, I've never talked about my shoes here on the channel, but when I know that I'm going to drive a manual car like this, I always wear my Vans. They are beat up, they are torn all the way down the side, but they have great pedal feel, and I get a lot of clutch feel through the bottom of the shoe. So whenever I drive a manual car, I'm wearing my Vans. Every other day of the week, I'm wearing my Reeboks because they're comfy, but they're super, super thick. I mean, you could see the edges of them, the sole of them. When I bought them, I still had my Miata and I got in to drive my Miata away and I couldn't feel anything. It was like trying to open a Tootsie Roll with winter mittens on. So for regular cars, that's fine. It's just the gas pedal I have to worry about. But when I drive stick shift, I like that pedal feel. And so I wear my beat up Vans. And isn't that a metaphor for this truck? This truck has seen a thing or two. It's got 194,000 miles on it. But you get in, you drive these because they work and they have great feel. I feel the road. I know what I'm driving over. That's what I love so much about these S10s. They're raw, they're unfiltered. They get the job done. It's starting to sound like I'm actually making a metaphor for Marlboro Reds. And so why do you buy an S10? Because they work. Because they're not soft around the edges. You can find tons of parts for them because, well, they use these engines and everything. That, that's why you buy an S10 like this and I absolutely love it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Colin for letting me take out his other Chevy S10, his other S10 I drove Man, it must have been three years ago. So I'm really thankful that he let me take this new one out. I absolutely love it. I love these little square body pickup trucks, and I know you guys do as well. So I'm very, very thankful he let me do that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to. Take care, guys.